Okay, everyone, if you managed to get all of this to work on your own, very good. Pat yourself on the back. You're a server administrator. You can command the big bucks now. So um, I've got this site uh, up and running. Uh, make sure you're in your dashboard. So I clicked on dashboard. I'm in the back end. Remember, we've got back end, front end. The back end is where you see all of your settings and such. So I've got my site running. And uh, I want to confirm one thing here. Click um, at the top left, hover over your mouse, and then click on Visit Site. You should see our Victor's Bakery site. And now what I want to confirm is click on About Us. How many of you got the message, Not Found? Okay, the reason you're getting Not Found is because there is one more step on the handout that said Turn on the Rewrite Module. The reason is we rewrote our addresses to have nice pretty names. That's what that permalink button was for. To have nice pretty addresses here instead of numbers. So even though you saved your permalink, you might not have done your rewrite module. I'll do that right now. But if you're not seeing real pages, when you go from page to page, you haven't activated the rewrite module. It's in the handout, but here's where you find it. Click on the little W on the bottom right. Click on Apache, click on Apache Modules, and then it's alphabetical. Go down to find Rewrite Module. Click to get down to Rewrite Module. When you find Rewrite Module, click on it. Not Request Module, be very careful. There's Request Module, Rewrite Module. Make sure it's Rewrite Module. So in the W, Apache, Apache Modules, Rewrite module. Click that on. The little W might go red and then orange and then back to green. Once it goes back to green, and you go back to your site and now try to click on links, you might have to press back. But now when you click on links, now you should have pages and not broken links because the rewrite module rewrote the uh, the the, the numbered links to be real words, such as contact. That is in the handout. It's the last step after our uh, site resurrection. Let's click back to the dashboard. So when we were last here, we set up the e-commerce plugin. We saw that under settings, we have a bunch of new settings inside of store. We looked at those last time. We saw that under dashboard, we've also got store sales, where we can keep track of everything we've been selling. We saw that under pages, we have some new pages. We've got now, what do we call it, products page, checkout, transaction results, and your account. We've got now pages where we can show our products and such. Well, the last piece of the puzzle in, is then to start to make products and start to see how all that works. We have a brand new section called products. Go ahead and click on products. We've got products view all products, add new product, deal with tags, categories, variations, coupons, and extras, which are usually not free. But now that we've got this plugin, we have this ability for products. We're going to explore this. Let's back up a moment. This is Victor's Bakery. I'm going to be selling a variety of baked goods. Pies, cookies, cupcakes, um, cakes, etc. A variety of categories of baked goods. So we've got categories, we've got tags. We should organize our products into categories because if we don't, all of our products will be shown on one huge list on our on our on our site. And over, if you go on Amazon, for example, you don't see every single one of their 10 million products on one big page. You see the baby clothing in the baby clothing section. You see the DVDs in the DVD section. You see the Blu-rays in the Blu-ray section. Everything that Amazon sells. You see the cat food in the cat food section. 
Everything that Amazon sells, it's in a category, in a screen, to focus on that set of products. That's why we want to talk about categories here, or else all of our products will be thrown onto one screen. Let's go to Categories. Click Categories here on the left. And it's a good idea, early on, to figure out some product categories to organize your products into. I'm making it easy on us because we're doing Victor's Bakery and therefore I've got some categories for you. On your own e-commerce site, you have to figure out what are my different products going to fit into. Let's say I'm a graphic designer. I want to get hired to be a graphic designer and I'm going to sell my services online. I could sell a product that is, you know, a $300 project. Another one is a $500 project. So I could categorize my services into price categories. I could categorize my services into actual, you know, things that I'm selling. Letterheads, the letterhead package, the full branding package, the car wraparound design package. Any business that you have, most likely you can categorize your products, goods or services, real or virtual products, into categories. You can add them later. As you start to create products, you might figure out, actually, this would work nice in this category. Or you can set it up early if you know, if you have a little foresight, which we do at the moment. We will see that we can also put products into more than one category. You're not limited to put one product into only one category. So for our bakery, under this screen here, we've got the default product category, which is pretty worthless. So we're going to create our own categories here. Add new product category, name, and slug. The slug is just basically the name that you type up here, lowercase. And you don't have to worry about typing a slug. It will type one for you once you type a name and save it. The slug is just the web address. Don't worry about typing it yourself. It'll do it for you. So one category of things that I'm selling on my bakery is cakes. I'm going to type cakes, and I should type it capital letters and such. I should type this human readable, because it will be human readable, as well as web search engine readable. So one type of thing that I'm selling are cakes. question is, should I type it as cake or cakes? It doesn't matter, but think about it in human readable terms. All my cakes are in this category the search engines will understand. You don't have to put a cake category and a cakes category. Uppercase, lowercase, doesn't matter. Search engines are, are smart now. So the name of this category is cakes. Don't worry about the slug. It'll do it for you. Don't worry about parent at the moment. Description. Description of the category is not prominently, is not prominent by default. However, some themes may show it. That goes back again to what I often say. It depends on your theme. Your theme might take the category and show it on screen. Most themes that I see don't. So what I like to do when I work with a theme that I'm not super familiar with, I like to turn on the options. I like to try a setting. And then it helps me figure out these are my capabilities. What I mean here is I will fill in a basic description. It may or may not show up on my screen because of the theme, but I don't know that until I try it. So what's a good description for our cakes category? Tasty handmade cakes with only the finest materials or ingredients. The purpose of this, even if this is not fully visible by the theme, it may still be visible to the search engines. And if you take the SEO class that I teach every Monday, if you want to come over, Mondays at 12.30 noon, I'm having the SEO class. One of the things we learn in the SEO class is to think about keywords, to think about what are the terms that people might search for on Google, on Yahoo, on Bing, on AOL, whatever, what are the keywords that people might search for that will help you get found? So thinking like that, well, why don't I throw in organic ingredients, you know, gluten-free goodies, whatever. I'm going to put in sentences here, keywords, phrases, 
of concepts that people might search for. That's fine for the moment, but I would want to think about what to write there because it'll help my SEO. Um, I might be able to add a photo to the category, which may or may not be visible depending on the theme. I'm not going to worry about that one yet. Not worry about the size and such, but notice here, at the moment, I've only got one way to display my products, the default view. If I purchase the, the gold cart, I think it's $99, one-time fee, it will give me other layout options for my products. List view, grid view. That's why I can't select those. I haven't bought the gold cart. So don't worry about that. This product will be restricted to certain markets. We've set this previously on our settings. Our products will only be available to the USA. If I wanted this product to also be available to India, I could activate it on a case-by-case -case basis, this category of products. I won't change it because I want all my products to be available to the, category, to the countries that I've selected in my settings. Don't change that. Check out setting. Remember I said that once we create, when we were over at the checkout screen <coughs> under our settings, when we were under checkout, it asked for uh, billing address, shipping address, etc. And I said that we can create more than one checkout form depending on the products. Here's one place to set that. Not everyone needs this, so don't worry. And previously, we set our shipping and billing and such in our main settings. If we wanted to change that per category, we could do so here. I didn't make any changes except to give this a name and a description. At the bottom, go ahead and click Add New Product Category. At the top now, we've got Cakes. With our description, they wrote a slug for us. We have no products in that category yet. Let's make another category. I'm also going to sell pies. Pies are different than cakes, technically, so we will make a pies category. Pies name, capital letters, human readable. Slug will fill itself in. Parent, don't worry about that yet. Description, again. Um, Let's say I'm going to do gluten-friendly or gluten-free, whatever the term would be, gluten-free uh, pies um, from classic recipes with a modern twist. Again, thinking about phrases and keywords, terms that people could search for to possibly find me through the search engines. That's the whole art and science and magic of SEO. Don't worry about anything else. Go ahead and save, or that is add the product category. Now I've got pies, cakes. Good. In your opinion, what's the third possible type of category of things I might I might sell? Cookies. Cookies. Let's put in cookies. And then on your own, everyone, choose your own description. Then. You want cookies, think of a description, add that category. Yes. You can't exactly get rid of them, but what you can do is all of these techniques of SEO, which is partly what we're talking about here, 
adding products, adding these keywords and phrases, posting on blogs, getting on social media. That's all of the concepts of the SEO class, the four-week SEO class. And throughout this class, I, I touch on a few things here and there of SEO. This is one of them. Write as much content as possible because that's what's going to help you get found when someone searches. And at the moment, I may start off very low and my competitors are very high because they're more famous and have been online longer. But if I try all of these techniques, or as many of them as I can, I start to rise because I'm doing blogging and my competitor is not. I'm using more keywords and my competitor is not. I'm using Twitter and my competitor is not. The search engines see all of that and if you follow these best practices, they will start to elevate you beyond your competitors. So it's the whole art and science. <coughs> all it's the whole art and science of SEO. Yes. Exactly. Whenever there's an opportunity to write descriptions and 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 things like that on on your products and your content, you should take advantage of that because the search engines see everything on your site, and the more it reads on your site and the more it understands about you, the better it can rank you. So it may not be necessarily show on that search; it's just reading it. Right? <coughs> it's it's reading it on screen. Yeah. They may not show up necessarily on screen on your website, but the search engine will still find it, most likely, and help you get elevated. I'm going to save that. If you haven't saved it yet, go ahead and add that category, and that's fine for the moment. We have three categories that we created, plus the default product category. Uh, don't worry about it. And just to show you that you can call these things whatever you want. There is a category called product category. And the slug became product dash category. So again, don't worry about filling in the slug. It does it for you. But that's a possible category. Later on, I would go back in and add more categories. And the thing that I skipped about parent is that the parent category, once you create some categories, you will be able to create a new category and <coughs> make it a child of the parent category. What I mean there is, I could have the parent category of cakes. And under cakes, I could sell sugar-free cakes and cakes that actually taste good. So then I could put those as children of the parent category of cakes. You see that? They're cakes, sugar-free, and the other kind. And I can have them both under the cakes category, the parent cakes category. It's just more ways to organize. So think about Let's say you go to Amazon, you want to buy a movie. Well, you want to buy a movie, but do you want it the DVD version or the Blu-ray version? Let's say I don't have a Blu-ray player, so I want the DVD version. Those are subcategories of the main category, which is, let's say, action movies. I want that action movie. Do I want it under Blu-ray? Do I want it under DVD? Do I want it under digital? So those are children categories of a parent category. We don't quite need it at the moment, but that's something that some of you might need. Question. They do actually. This will show up in the permalink. This will show up in the address bar. We'll see where. That's why we want to set those permalinks to be, you know, nice, pretty names, so that this is also a keyword that the search engine sees. So that's a good amount for the moment. Uh, let's go look at product tags. People get confused about product tags and categories. And for the moment, we're not going to work with tags just yet because categories, I can, um, categories I can plan for before I start to add, add products like we just did. And tags, usually we figure those out as we add products. And at the beginning, it's hard to figure out, should I add this as a tag or a product? For example, I'm going to sell chocolate <coughs> birthday cakes. Chocolate birthday cakes. Clearly, I have the category cakes. So I'm going to put my chocolate birthday cake in the category of cakes. And, well, why don't I also create a chocolate category? Uh, because I might sell chocolate chip cookies. Well, chocolate is more of a tag than a category. Chocolate is a tag that I'm applying to the chocolate chip cookie 
and the chocolate cake. They are completely different categories. One's a cake, one's a cookie. But they both have the tag, the the um, linking concept of of, of chocolate. Oftentimes, yes. If it appears more than once, if it's used more than once on multiple categories, it is a tag. Um, there's no right or wrong answer, but I suggest that the larger organizational concepts are categories, and the smaller details are tags. So chocolate chip cookies, chocolate birthday cakes, chocolate pecan pies, those are tags. But there was a pie, there was a cookie, and there was a cake. Those are the larger categories. Because then I'm going to have key lime pie, cherry pie, apple pie, chocolate pecan pie. All of those are pies, and one of them was chocolate, so it was in my chocolate tag. I don't quite have an idea of what tags I will use just yet, so I'm not going to add any at the moment. I usually add them when I create the product. What's a tag used for? Then? Is it kind of a search tool? Or? Tags and categories are both useful for search because our WordPress sites have a built-in feature for search. If someone comes into our site, they'll see the search box. They type in keyword uh, chocolate. It will show everything tagged as chocolate or everything in the category of chocolate. So yes, it is helpful for items to be found via search, and it's also helpful uh, for the search engines. When they analyze your site, it'll see the keyword chocolate or the product tag chocolate. It'll see the product tag sugar-free, etc. Yes. <coughs> so you're sure that there's no way to further segment your product into different target audiences, maybe? You could think about it that way. That one version of your product could be in a certain category, in another could be in another category. Possibly, in your case, we might think about variations. We'll talk about variations as well. I might have one product which are paintings. I only sell oil paintings, but I sell surrealist style oil paintings, and I sell realist social uh, oil paintings, and I sell photorealistic oil paintings. So I could put them into categories there, or when we talk about variations, we could talk about that. So there's probably some way to still further differentiate your product to target audiences. And we can talk about that uh, during breaks and such. Let's click on products. At the moment we have no products, but they will all be listed here. And there's various things that we need to fill in per product. This is just the tip of the iceberg. We can be very detailed. So here's where we'll see all our products. If we want to create a brand new product, obviously then click Add New Product, either here under Product or at the top there. Let's add a new product. Click Add New under Products. Yes. You can have hundreds of thousands of products. Mm -hmm. It's a third-party product out there that allows you to do this more smoothly. This is convenient. Mm -hmm. This, unfortunately, I don't think there's any thing quite ex that exists that will help us do this speedily because there's just so many possibilities for this. Um, you know, your particular product might have so many variables to it that there's no plugin or whatever out there that will really help us do it quickly. So that's what unpaid interns are for. <laughs> Or something you code yourself, yeah. All you need to know is a little bit of uh, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and PHP, and you're fine. Mm -hmm. So at the moment, we have a few simple products we'll work with. <coughs> a bunch of fields to fill in, and yes, it can be cumbersome. Maybe there is some sort of quick create plugin out there. We'll explore it a little later, but we'll do a few manually here. So we've got, of course, product name at the top here. Let's start off with Key Lime Pie. Key Lime Pie. We would type it in capital letters and so forth, just like a real product. 
click inside the main editor here, and then we've got um, the editor here. Notice the Pumba link filled itself in. Name of your website, blah, 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 product slash. This will automatically fill in, fill in a product category. In our case, will be pies if we set it. So it automatically creates an address for us. And at the very end of the address, it says key lime pie. There's our permalink. That's helping our SEO also because people could search online key lime pie. In here, uh, we won't worry too much about filling in this description just yet, but this would be the description of the product. Again, uh, for a real sort of store and such, you would think about how to best describe your product. But at the moment, I will just say um, grandma's old-fashioned recipe with real key lines. And I could add pictures and bullet points. I could do all of this great stuff. Let's just say it's <coughs> fine for the moment. On the right side, we've got the publish uh, box. Don't worry about that yet. We're not going to publish it yet, but we have save draft. Go ahead and click save draft. That uh, you know saves a draft before it's ready for everyone to see. Below that, we've got tags, and below that, we've got categories. For some reason, mine is set to cookies. Yours may or may not be, or yours may be set to product category. That's the default. So. This should be under cakes, or a pies that is, so select pies. And notice we can have more than one category. This, of course, does not make sense to put the key lime pie into cookies. So make sure it's only under pies. For the mo Actually, for the moment, put it under pies and product category. I'll explain why later. But the default should be product category. Leave that on. And then pies. As I'm creating the uh, <coughs> item, this is when I might figure out what tags to use. Let's say I thought of a tag right here under product tags, separated with commas. This tag, again, I should use capital letters and such. Let's say a variety of my products are part of grandma's recipe. Uh, grandma's recipe for key lime pie, for chocolate chip cookies, for etc. So I'll have a tag called Grandma's Recipe, and then Add. I can use that tag multiple times per product. And again, the point of this is for organization, I can, I can display only things that are tagged as Grandma's Recipe on my site if I want to. And also, when someone searches in my site for Grandma's Recipe, all grandma's recipe tagged items will display. And that could even also go out to the search engines. If someone searches for a certain recipe uh, or product with that name, it can get found. There are limitations. It will, uh, it will search. You don't really need to get into the what I mean about that is we don't need to get into the plurals and the singulars and all of that. However, here, uh, because we do have that apostrophe, it may, if someone just searches grandma recipes, it may or may not show up. Uh, so for the moment, uh, I have to double check if it will matter to do variations of that. But um, we shouldn't need to because the, the search engine is getting smarter. Let's say then um, we'll add one more tag here. Let's say this one is um, sugar free. I didn't say it in my description, but let's say I wrote it there too. Add. So we've got two tags. I can remove tags by deleting them there. As I create tags, then I will be able to choose them here quickly. So notice I can create a tag over on the tag screen, or I can create tags at this moment here. Same thing with categories. I We created tags on its 
I mean, we created categories in the category screen, but if I want to create a category at this moment, I can add one right here. Yes? Exactly, one or two word phrases, uh, thinking in terms of how people might search in your site. You got featured image, set featured image. Depending on your theme, this image that we attach to the product may show up in a variety of ways. I want to add a featured image, so click set featured image. Looks like we've got one picture already from previous days. And we can also select to upload a picture. Let's say we want to borrow, for educational purposes, a picture of a key lime pie. <coughs> so what we'll do here, go ahead and open up another browser window or tab. Click on the little browser tab icon. And we'll just type at the top here, key lime pie picture. Key lime pie picture. We get search results. Any one of them will matter. For educational purposes, this is fine. But for a real website, don't do this. For a real website, don't just search for pictures and borrow a picture. Educational purposes, we're fine. For a uh, real website, use your own pictures or uh, go to websites. I think I mentioned it last month. I'll mention it again. Or go to websites that specialize in free photos. Because you may not think about it like this, but these photos, these are copyrighted photos. They might be trademarked photos. They should not be photos that you can just borrow from online. Photographers make a living taking photos and selling these photos to companies and such. You did not pay for that photo, so you can't, act, you can't use it. It's very easy to save any picture online, but it's probably not legal. I'm showing a website here that I showed last month. I think I showed it last month. And here we've got pixabay.com. This is a website all about free, high-quality photos that are okay for you to use. This is a great site because it's got a lot of great photos, high quality, free for you to use. You don't have to give credit. You don't have to ask permission. Just find the photo, download it, and use it. And these photos are so good that you can even use them, you know, high quality printed. You can take one of these photos and print it as big as a poster and put it up on your put it up on your business's wall. You can make a billboard out of these. Oftentimes when you do a search over here on a plain old Google search, Bing search, you might not get very high quality useful images unless you know tricks. But here on Pixabay, I'll try the same thing. Key lime pie. I'll just type key lime pie. We don't get a huge amount of results unfortunately like a Google search but here you're more safe in using these pictures. I, if you do search Pixabay, avoid the first row, which are these sponsored images. That's how they stay in business. These are sponsored. Don't worry about those. In my case, I only see two key lime pies, and I don't really see them very key limey. Okay. They look like any sort of meringue kind of pie, I guess. So this site is not perfect. You're not going to get a million results of key lime pies like I did over at Google. Half a million. I got two. I'm not really happy with them. But it's better to be safe than sorry. It's better to use images that are okay for you to use than just borrow any image. Let's say we'll, we will use one of these images. So either on a Google search or on Pixabay, click on your picture. And here on Pixabay, I have free download. and it's public domain, free for commercial use, no attribution required, perfect. I have a commercial use. People sometimes say it's okay to use pictures from somewhere else online if you're not going to make money off of them. Well, that's most up to the lawyers to decide if that's okay. 
instead of getting into that trouble, just avoid that. Some people say, if you change the photo 10%, you're okay. Well, what's 10% of changing a photo? Did I change the background? Did I change the color that I rotated it? That's also for the lawyers to decide. Don't even get into that. So, uh, if you go to Bing and search Key Lime Pie Public Domain, that might lead you toward better results or go to a site that specializes in that kind of photo. I like this photo. I'm going to click free download on the right. Different sizes doesn't matter. Uh, you don't really need the big, big high quality one. 459 kilobytes. So you don't need that one that's way too high quality. People ask, well, what size should I make my pictures when I put them online? This one of medium is a good measuring stick. 1200 pixels or so is a good size to put online. That's actually slightly larger than I would want. My recommendation, <coughs> sizes for images on your site. Um, maximum width or height, about 1,000 pixels. So a vertical picture of 1,000 um, would be good, or horizontal, whatever the width turns out to be, because usually your pictures are proportional. So 1,000 is fine. Uh, it's still big enough so that when we do the zoom in to the picture, you can still see some detail, but it's not so big that it takes a long time to download. The tricky thing about images is we can deal with them dimension size-wise and file size-wise. So if you're going, this is dimension size-wise. File size, that one's harder for me to tell you an actual value. File size, try to be at around less than 200 kilobytes. That's still a little bit higher than I would, than I would like, but sometimes it's a balancing act visual quality versus download size and file size quality. This is what web designers are always dealing with. I can make a beautiful HD quality photo, it'll look perfect on these screens, but it's 500 kilobytes, 700 kilobytes, and I've got seven of them on my page. Seven times 700, you know, I'm, I'm downloading several megabytes of data and it could slow down my site. And especially if they're on a mobile device with a bad connection, it's taking a long time to download that huge photo. Based on what we're getting here, this is saying, okay, 1280, 200. It's a little bit out of my limits, but, you know, beggars can't be choosers. What you could do is download that and open it in Photoshop and shrink it down or crop it or whatever to follow a little bit more in my parameters, but that's good enough for us there for the moment, especially if we're not, you know, uh, graphic designers. So that's some general parameters. Uh, the reason for this is that the more of these high quality pictures that you put onto your site, the, the, the slower your site gets, and the more problems could happen when you do that duplicator backup. Duplicator will tell you, if your images are too big, you might have a problem and it may not back up your site. And then you don't have that safety net anymore of duplicator. So I'm going to go with the medium quality sized here on Pixabay. Click download. It might pop up to say confirm, you know, read those numbers. So 2826 on my case. Downloaded. Mine downloaded to the desktop. On these computers, I believe when you download anything, they, it should go to the desktop. So the point of this is I'm looking for a picture online for key lime pies. I want to set it onto my featured image. I've got a picture. I'm going to go back to the tab of my web browser where I'm setting my featured image upload file, and I need to select. And notice even this is telling you the maximum upload size is 3 megabytes. So don't take that photo 
with your high quality camera or even your cell phone and upload it as is. That's way too high quality. You're wasting download and bandwidth and people's patience. If you're uploading your photos straight from your camera to your site, you're making your site bigger and bigger and bigger and slower. You do want to shrink your pictures. In this case, I'm going to select files here. And on your desktop, most likely, so click on the left side desktop. <clears throat> Under your desktop, the picture should be there somewhere. Select it and open it. You click the button that says free download. Yes. Yes, actually. So um, Photoshop is the big famous one, but uh, here's one for regular people. If you go on the if you go on the website um, pixlr.com, p i x l r.com, pixlr.com. This is a very cool free photo editor, pixlr.com. It's been around for several years. It feels like seven or eight years. Pixlr. Basically, on Pixlr, we have Pixlr Editor, which is like a baby Photoshop. It's got all of these tools that are reminiscent of Photoshop for free. So you can go to the Pixlr Editor and use that. For us, most likely, we want Pixlr Express, which is the quick way to shrink a photo, the quick way to rotate a photo, add a cool filter and such. And this is all free. You can even download the app. Uh, I think they have an, an iPhone and Android app for it, Pixlr Mobile. And now they've got Pixlr Desktop. I haven't seen this one myself yet, but now it looks like they've got a downloadable version. But if I go here and go over to Pixlr Express, the web app, this will give me a way for me to upload my picture and resize it or crop it and resave it and shrink it and all of that for free. So Pixlr, P-I-X-L-R dot com. So I've uploaded the picture. It's waiting for me here. Uh, I uploaded the picture. There's some details on the right. Don't worry about that yet. Just click Set Featured Image. There are a bunch of other things to fill in here. We'll talk about those right after the break, but one more thing I want to fill in before we take our break. Besides the description and amazing photography, what's another important thing about any of our products that we need to fill in? Price. How much does this cost? So there's a little box here, product pricing. Price, sale price. Okay, we'll talk about the, these boxes in detail right after the break. Let's say, and I don't know the prices of a real pie, so let's just say $12. This pie costs $12. So I added a title. I added a description, tags, categories, picture, price. There's other things to look at, but for the moment, back up to the top and click Publish. We can, of course, come back and further edit this product, especially if we made a mistake. But go ahead and publish it, and then visit site. At the moment, our products are under the product category, product page. So why don't you click on products right there, key lime pie for sale. I see my pie there. What's that? 
go ahead and publish it, yep, and then go back to visit site. In my products page, and I don't like that they're called products, they're not products, they're you know yummy treats from from the, from the heavens. So I want to change that later. Products page, key lime pie, there's a product I just created, there's my description. If I click on that picture, I get a little zoom action, very nice. Um, quantity that I can add, price and shipping, add to cart. It's not so obvious in this theme, but if I click on the title, the title of my product, and then focuses on that product, so I see a nice big photo of it there. This is all because of the theme. Then I see the another picture here, and then further description, add to cart, and so forth. If you do click Add to Cart, you get this pop-up where you can go to checkout, continue shopping. If I go to checkout, so just explore this a moment, we'll see it in detail. Here's a shopping cart, my checkout screen, etc. So all of that that's built in from this plugin. What we're going to do is we're going to take our break um, to make sure we're all on the same page here, and then we will add more products, see what else we can do with this, and, and keep going. So at least you should have one product. Check it out on visit site. Take a break. We'll be back at one, uh, two, two o five, and then we'll go on.